And these Bilstein shocks are like the Nokia phone of shocks. If you know, you know. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the aftermath of me deciding to jump my 2021 Ram TRX. I feel like it doesn't really need an explanation, so let's just get right into the video. So I'm gonna chop this video up into several parts because I know that the average person has a pretty short attention span nowadays. And so first off, let's answer the main question. Did I break anything major on the truck? And the answer is no. And well, I'll see all of you guys in the next video. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, yes, that is correct. Nothing major broke broke on the truck, which is a huge plus and it shows the engineering that has gone into play to create the TRX. Now I've purposely left the T-Rex dirty these last few days so that you guys could kind of like see what it actually looks like after driving through the desert. So you can see that this is like just uh, crazy in terms of how much everything is stained. And the funny thing is I got the truck detailed the, like literally a day before I took it out. And um, well, a moment of silence for the bugs here on the front end of the truck. Okay, anyways, continuing along, uh, you guys can see, other than the fact that the truck's really dirty, everything is fine. Like I said, nothing major with the truck. And the thing I'm really surprised about is the fact that we wrapped the outside part of the wheel and it's held up really well so far, even through off-road situations. I thought that it would just tear and just get really beat up, but I mean, you guys can see, holding up really well, obviously still looks really good. Um, and then yes, it's uh, extremely dirty here with the shocks and all that, but the truck's not doing anything weird. The biggest piece of damage has actually happened to the wrap and it's just completely superficial. So if you guys remember, the whole front end of this truck is wrapped with paint protection film. And you guys can see there's this little chip here in the wrap. Now it only went through the wrap and not the paint protection film. What happened is to get you guys the wheel angle, I had a GoPro attached to here on the door and I opened up the door too fast. And so the GoPro went and like scratched against the wrap. So like that's the biggest piece of damage. So like I said, there's nothing actually serious that went uh, wrong with the truck. And then popping here into the rear, I'll show you guys everything here and obviously i'll get the truck cleaned up for today notice like look at these little parts here in the wheel just like how much stuff actually holds and this will be fun to kind of clean out behind there as well one thing that i did notice that happened all the time is this kick step just continually kept like popping out sometimes when i'd land from the jumps which i thought was kind of uh interesting that i mean that happens but yeah i mean that's obviously not a big deal or anything like that and something that I do want to mention is the spare tire did a really good job. Didn't obviously go over all the place and other the lights. Everything like stayed really well put together. And obviously we caught quite a bit of air and you guys can see everything is still really well lined up with the body panels, everything. Sometimes when you jump a vehicle, if you guys saw Street Speed 717's video, which is how not to jump a vehicle, basically, um, you guys like saw with this truck, the body panels and everything were like all mismatched and everything, because this truck got like all bent up because of the landing and also because he had the tires in the bed and those just, when he landed and everything pretty much put a bunch of pressure and everything but it was mostly because of the landing if you guys saw his video he caught a bunch of air and then he kind of landed all crooked all over the place of the truck so it really just yeah bent pretty much everything on the truck um but yeah none of that happened with this truck like we got i'm pretty i feel like um other than the fact that he went over like a little river thing or a little stream so it made it look like he got more air i feel like we got pretty comparable air but because the landing spot was so good with where I picked, obviously nothing happened damage-wise to the truck. Now before we continue the video, I need the truck to be clean, so... Boom. Well, kind of boom. And we're in a completely different place, but the truck is all clean. Now this is exactly why you wrap a vehicle and do paint protection film. You guys can see you've got that little rock chip right there. Now it hasn't gone through the paint. It went through the wrap, but it's just um, basically got stopped by the paint protection film. And then I think there was another one over on well this one's tiny you can't even i don't even know if it's going to show up on camera it's like minuscule but i would rather have it on the wrap and the paint protection film than through the paint so that's definitely why you wrap a vehicle <whistles> Doo -doo -doo. boom and yes, we are literally at a random church because, um, well, I had to leave my house. The high school got out and they all drive by my house every single day. And it's impossible to film when you have a bunch of kids just completely mobbing out to gangster rap, like as loud as their stereos can possibly go. Uh, so yeah, suffice to say, I had to come over here to finish this video. 
but you guys can see uh, tire pressure is pretty low. So now for the rest of the video, I just wanted to go over the costs of off-roading so you guys can kind of like really get a grasp for everything that has to happen. Um, and then also just like the stuff that I've learned from this experience and then past off-roading experiences so that if you've recently purchased something like a Raptor or a TRX, then you can kind of be better prepared. So the first cost is obviously going to be gas and that is typically going to be the most expensive cost associated with off-roading if you buy an off-road ready vehicle on a regular basis, as long as you don't break anything. Uh, and it really depends. So like this last time I took the TRX off-road, I got about four and a half miles per gallon. That is right. I averaged 4.5 <laughs> miles per gallon, um, which is pretty low. I typically get like seven miles per gallon when I go off-road, but because of the jumping and everything, it definitely brought down the MPG quite a bit. Now in my Raptor, I get a little bit better. I was getting like nine, sometimes 10 miles per gallon when I go off-road. And then if I did the jumping stuff and everything, I'd drop down to like seven or eight. So the Raptor does do a little bit better off-road, but it's not like a crazy amount. Now, aside from fuel costs, the other thing that you have to take into account is going to be stuff that's going to have higher wear and tear rates. So tires and brakes, that's a huge one. I literally had one of my brakes on the Raptor disintegrate, which was kind of scary, but it happened. Uh, so just take that into account that you're gonna have to change tires and brakes a little bit more often. Um, the brake thing, that was kind of a freak accident, but I can tell you on tires, my Raptor was pretty much done for at about 15, 16,000 miles with the tires that it had. Uh, and so again, kind of expect to have to spend more money on that front. And then obviously if you puncture a tire, then well, I mean, with these off-road tires, you're 400 bucks a tire right now, which is, I know very expensive. Uh, and sometimes you can get a little bit of a better deal, but again, just take that into account with off-roading is you're just gonna have to replace that stuff more often and you're gonna have a higher chance of getting a puncture. And speaking of tires, I'm kind of going lower and lower with the PSI as I off-road more and more. Um, now that you guys that off-road on a regular basis are probably gonna be like, well, of course, that's just what you do. That's common sense. Uh, but it's kind of like this uh, scale almost where you kind of start at a little bit higher PSI Which is the cold weather recommended PSI for the tire and then you go from there um, to get better ride comfort And so right now you guys saw the TRX. I'm in the low 30s for the PSI uh, that being said Next time I go off-road, I'm probably gonna drop it into the mid-20s for the PSI, especially if I'm gonna do any jumping, just because having the tires at a lower PSI makes it a lot easier to jump uh, because you get better traction. And on top of that, the landing is a lot softer, right? If you've got really high pressure tires, then the landing's gonna be a little bit harsher. Yes, the shocks and the suspension are very important, but P tire PSI is also very important. Um, so what I'd recommend, if you are gonna be going off-roading, start with the cold weather recommended PSI and then start going down from there. Uh, and then from people that I've talked to, they usually recommend to not go, for most tires, it's gonna vary vehicle to vehicle, but to really not go below like 15, 16 PSI, because then you get to the point where if you don't have a bead lock, then the tire is gonna become detached from the wheel. And well, you don't want that happening. Now let's talk about the jump itself and what I learned with that. And there's quite a bit I learned from doing this particular jump. Now, obviously I did a bunch of jumping with the Raptor and I learned quite a bit. The thing that I learned with the Raptor is you don't need a massive jump to actually get air and to have fun. And that definitely transfers over to the T-Rex. You don't need to have a crazy ramp. Like again, what you guys saw on Street Speed 717's video where he jumped over that creek, he obviously had that like crazy ramp set up and everything. You don't need that to catch air. It's a little bit over the top. Um, so that's the first thing is there's a lot of stuff that doesn't look like a jump that you can make to it into a jump if you're going fast enough. Obviously, be careful. The next thing is you need to make sure your landing spot is even. That's something that, again, Street Speed 717 made a huge mistake with, is you guys can see in the video how his truck just is all over the place with the landing. And it looks like the area that he's in is just like the ground is very soft, like there's tons of moisture in it, which obviously he can't control that. He can't like control the environment. But what he can control is the, the area that he lands. And he just picked a bad area for a landing spot. Like, again, super just crooked all over the place, uneven. You don't want that as a landing spot because that's gonna just bend stuff with the truck, especially if you hit hard like what he did in his video. And so you wanna make sure you have an even landing spot. And then as for the jump itself, you wanna preferably pick a jump where the landing spot is higher than the jump. Now for like Instagram and camera purposes, this might not look as cool, 
but it's a lot safer because if the landing spot is higher than the jump itself, you're gonna have a softer landing, which again, if you're trying to be safe and if you don't wanna break your truck, that's kind of what you're going to be looking for. Now, the next thing you guys have already kind of heard me talk about this is just speed test the jump. If you pick a jump where the landing spot is higher than the jump, then typically you can speed test it where you can take it at a slower rate and you can build up to a higher speed to where you're comfortable and also where you know that nothing's gonna break on the truck. Like you guys saw in the video where I did the big jump with this truck, I took it um, at you know gradually incremental rates. So the actual jump itself, the bigger one, I think I was probably going about 40-ish miles an hour, but you guys saw that I was doing the jumps and you guys, there's a lot of stuff I didn't do on camera where I went up that ramp at like 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, right? These increments. And so then I kind of got comfortable myself. And then on top of that, I made sure that, okay, the landing's gonna be fine. The jump's gonna be, like everything's gonna be fine um, from a suspension standpoint and all that. And so you, again, if you pick that type of jump, then you'll be able to actually test it versus if you just do a ramp across a creek, right? Like Street Speed 717 did, you've got to just go full send the first time or you're going to crash, which again, that's not preferable if you're just trying to have fun. It looks cool. It looks really cool. Don't get me wrong. It looks awesome, but it's not necessarily the best thing to do. I'm finally back home because all the high school kids jamming out to their gangster rap are gone. And so you can actually hear me instead of loud music. Uh, but anyways, again, just touching on the key points. Again, pick a jump that has a flat landing area, preferably a jump where the jump itself is at a lower elevation compared to the landing spot. So you have a smoother landing. You're gonna have less compression with the suspension itself. Cause you guys are got to think already, if you're sailing through the air at, you know, in my case, I was going about 40 miles an hour. You're already gonna have tons of compression with the suspension. If you add that to a drop in elevation, you're gonna have even more compression with suspension with the suspension because you're gonna have gravity pushing against the truck. You're already having gravity pushing against the truck but right if you're going up it's not going to be as extreme hopefully that makes sense to you guys i think i mean to me it's just logical but i see so many jump videos and people again go from higher elevation to lower elevation and yeah it looks cool but typically the front end of the truck will go down and it just hits so hard and that's why people will absolutely destroy the suspension on the front end and everything on their vehicles um, so again, that's kind of the preferred route to go and then speed test the jump. So start at lower speeds and go up to higher speeds again, just to be safe and then also not to break anything in your vehicle. And something with the TRX I found out specifically is you really don't need to press on the gas all that much. If you guys saw my last jump where I took, where I got a bunch of air, literally I just coasted down the hill to the um, up ramp that goes up to the jump. And the thing that's crazy is on camera, it looks so small in person. The ramp is like vertical almost, like the truck is almost driving. It's crazy, uh, but it's awesome. I love it. And so literally what, if you guys pay close attention to the video, I kind of like lightly tap into the throttle. I just roll down the hill. And then right as I'm getting up to the jump, then I floor it. The truck, the T-Rex has so much power. You can do that. But with the Ford Ranger, I was flooring it all the way through because again, it has significant, I mean, that truck had like, what, 270 horsepower versus 702. So depending on how much power your vehicle has will determine how long you're on the throttle. So definitely be aware of that. And I would start conservative and then go up, but it's something you can have a ton of fun with and you can do it in a practical way where you're not going to destroy your vehicle. And if you do the things that I said to do, then again, you're not gonna put nearly as much wear and tear on the vehicle and you're not gonna get in that situation where things are just gonna blow apart. Now that's gonna sum things up for today's video and hopefully that gave you guys some insight into what I do when I'm looking for jumps to actually jump the vehicle. And I will be doing more of it in the future, but I'm gonna be testing some different things. So like I said, the next thing I'm gonna be testing is I'm gonna have lower PSI on the tires. And I think if I do the lower PSI with the tires and kind of like incrementally increase the speed, I think I can hit that same jump at a higher speed, get a little bit more air, have a little bit more fun, but obviously it'll be all kind of like a testing thing. And you know what, if we end up blowing out the suspension and the T-Rex, that means we get to be one of the first people with the T-Rex to test out, you know, completely new suspension with the truck, which I mean, that could be a pretty fun series. But anyways, if you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe and I'll see all of you in the next video.